Here we go. Hello and welcome to... <laughs> Just doing some throat clearing exercises, were you? <laughs> Don't start. Hello and welcome to Help I Sex With My Boss, the Hello. podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what do you do if hotel inspector Nancy Pelosi <laughs> says you've got no style or no taste? And how do you deal with losing all £300 on Bargain Hunt. The two everyday problems. You need to, you need to start working more if this He's is... He's watched a lot of TV. Know, it's in Bargain Hunt in ages. And what should you do if you've accidentally <laughs> sexted your boss? But we're not usual like any ants. Oh, we're William Hanson, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not, Jordan North, TV, radio presenter, dancer. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm more Oxford Dictionary, you're more Urban Dictionary. Oh, very I good. like it. Thank very you to good. Lily and Bennett for sending that one in. Okay. Uh, should we have a drink? Yes, let's have a drink. We're discussing your moves. I think we probably do need a bit of a drink. Okay. Um, Gina de Bonnet, as ever. Using up the old de Bonnet. Hopefully that'll be gone after this. I don't like the old design now. I've gone I'll off it. That. It don't looks really weird looking at that design now. Oh, you've had a good week. Been on holiday. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, gosh, that's a lot. Uh, all right, who are we toasting? Who should we toast to? Should we toast to um, Burnley, the Clarets, for going up? Yes, they've gone up, haven't yes. they? Now, tell me what that means. So we've gone to the Premier League. They've gone to the... Um, up, I thought we'd struggle this Is that season. the top? Yeah, yes. we've been promoted. Okay, so because we've... you were in the... Jam. Premiership, and now we're in the Championship at the moment, but next season we'll be in the Premiership. So Premier, the cha- League. Premier League. Did I say Premiership? I said, people, I can't believe I said that. League One. No, you don't say Premiership, you say Premier League. Premier League. Did I say Premiership? Oh, I God. think you did. That's so awkward. And weren't, can I just say, when we started this podcast, they were in that top zone thing, yes? They were in the Prem, yeah. They yeah, been. and then they got relegated. What year did we start? 2018. Yeah. Oh, I think we got promoted the first season. Anyway, unlike Stoke City, who went down, we oh. went down and come back up, but I did think we'd be a bit of a Stoke and so <laughs> I thought, I did, I thought we'd struggle. And it, Stoke to, City is, is who produced a Ben. To supports. Vincent Company and the Clarets. All to them. Cheers. Up the Clarets. Say it. <laughs> Up the Clarets. Yeah. Mm. UTC for life. Mm. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss. Or you can write to William Hanson, who promises a handwritten reply on his own letter of paper. The address is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. Can I talk to you about your top? Yeah, I like your jumper. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to talk to you about your top. I didn't say I liked it. Oh. No, it is nice. It suits you. What? It does. Your suit. I mean, I couldn't pull that off. No. And you could. I couldn't pull pull that off. Can I tell you about this jumper? Should we just describe the tops for those? What? We're not no, not so. Jo- Jordan's in a black crew neck sweater with a uh, little A sort of heart design over his left tit. Uh, that's there. And then I am in... A blue V-neck... Sweater. Sweater. Jersey. Yeah. With, with a white... With a, with a bit of a white detail. Can I tell... Right. This yeah. jumper. So yes. basically... No, it won't take me long. On Saturday Night Takeaway, <clears throat> uh, in one of the rehearsals... A couple of weeks ago, I said to Anne, oh, I really like your jumper. And he went, oh, thanks. And I said, oh, it's really smart. Where'd you get it from? I can't make sure he doesn't know. And then on the last show in the UK, they got me this jumper and sent me a little card. Oh. And and deck. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet, isn't it? And that says all you need to know about them. So that has an A and a heart. Does that A stand for Ant? No, it's the brand. (laughs) Yeah, I've got another one with a D and a heart, (laughs) which I probably would wear, to be fair. To be fair, I'd wear one that says D with a little heart. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But do you not think that's really sweet? Yes. I got in my dressing room and they got me a little, they bought it for me. That's lovely. And a little card. That's nice. Yeah. Well, it it looks very nice. I couldn't wear black because it would wash me out. No, you'd said that before. Everyone suits black. No, no, they don't. No, all our fair listeners listening to this will be screaming. Mm. 
Where, where's your jumper from? Who got you that? Uh, this is from Benetton. The United Colours of Benetton. Okay. Yes, yeah, a bit of a throwback. It suits you. It's nice. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes, um, I like it. Anyway, tell me about Singapore. You've been away for your yes. dad's... Um, well, for my dad's birthday, and I have to apologise. You apologize. never say dad. Well, no, actually. There we go. Oh, it's rubbing off. Um, for your dad's 70th, wasn't it? Well, it was booked for March 2020. Oh, God. We obviously all know what happened then, so we didn't go. So it's it's several years delayed, but we finally... Several? Is, three? Yeah. Se- well, many. Well, several is... Two plus. Oh, I thought it was seven. No, and you more. have a couple, and then <laughs> s- several is like three onwards. No, that's a few. Several. What? I always thought. Are you joking? I always thought several was like seven or more. No, no. Or near seven years. Several years. No, I think the fact. I mean, I know it's got the first few letters, but I don't think it's got any correlation I to seven. I always thought it was like like nearly seven or over seven years. Anyway, carry on. Okay. Um, well. We finally ended up going, both my parents, my brother, Mikey and me. It was lovely. I have to apologise to my father because we turn up at uh, the second hotel and I had written to both the hotels we were staying in in advance to say, look, we're coming for my father's birthday. If there's anything you can do for him, you know, lovely, blah, blah, see if they'd upgrade his room or put a bottle of champagne in the room, etc. This hotel, lovely hotel, put a little cake in the room, perfect, and sort of did, you know, happy birthday, Brian, on, on the plate and had put happy 73rd birthday, Brian. So my father said, you know, oh, this is so nice. And then he starts getting cross. He goes, oh, they've got my wrong age. They've got... And I'm thought, you know, oh, you know, hilarious. You know, they should have put 63. <laughs> He's 72. I had emailed the hotel saying he was 73. In fact, oh. I've told all my friends recently that my father's just turned 73. He's 72. Oh, OK. But as I said to my father, I don't think he appreciated this. I said, the good news is I've got a whole other year with you I didn't know I had. Oh, yes. that's sweet. That's nice. How old, that, how old was your dad when he had you then? In his 30s. I think he was my age now, actually. My mum had four kids by she was 29. <laughs> she had four of us, 29. Wow. She had Rain at 19. Yes. I think she had me at 21. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Um, anyway, so no, we had, we had a nice time. Singapore. You haven't been to Singapore, have you? Believe it or not, no. No. It's amazing. Is it? It is amazing. I would move there in an instant if it weren't so far away and there'd no work for me. Uh, other than you're here. But other than that, Lovely. Brilliant city. Everything is efficient. Everything is immaculately clean. Mm. Uh, it works. People are very courteous. Oh. The food is amazing. You can eat anything you want. Um, they've got some lovely signs on public transport to help with the courtesy. They've got little characters sort of on these sort of graphics. So stand up, Stacey. That's encouraging people to give up your seat. I mean, we have the priority seats on, on public transport, but they've got little slogans that rhyme that say things like, so Stand Up Stacey has a little thing coming out of her saying, give up your seat, that'll be sweet. What, That's a, nice. Is it a sign? This little car- caricature. Oh, okay. Then there's another one. I can't remember what he's called, but it says, bag on the floor, there's room for more. It's nice. And then my favourite one, which is on all platforms, if you molest, we will arrest. Just randomly. Make a nice slogan out of it, everyone. <laughs> if you molest, we will arrest. I've got photographs. It's yeah. just all these nice little That's slogans great. and then and then that one. Should we talk about how your father's a bit of a cross-dresser now? Because <laughs> you sent me the funniest picture. My father's gone trans. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone what happened. So we're out in Singapore having a lovely time. <laughs> it and it like... gets halfway through the day. We're, we stop for coffee, and my father comes back from the loo and is sort of slightly laughing, and he says, Sarah, I've been wearing your shorts all afternoon, <laughs> all day. These navy shorts, and actually, once he sat down, they were riding up a little high. <laughs> uh, and he thought, oh, I did, th- I, did, I did think they were buttoning up weirdly, because ladies' shorts and trousers button up. I can't do them, because I'm right. I'm, I used to wear my mum's skinny jeans, and I can't do them, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yes and anyway and then to make sort of matters worse sort of later on in the day we get back to the hotel and and before you know just a rest before dinner it's about four hours after that incident we go into my parents room to drop something off and my father's still wearing them he hasn't even taken them off no why not if they're comfy no they fitted so it's fine yeah that's how it starts yes so it's fine we're we're very supportive all inclusive we support him in whatever he wants to do Cutting to uh, cutting to, to Langkawi, which was sort of a little desert island, as I said in Friday's weekend release, it's like the Isle of Man to Malaysia. And um, we, uh, obviously it's very hot, 
So air conditioning was working, but there's a nice fan in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. And we go to bed on the first night, and I you know, said to Mike, he said, should we have it on, like, speed two? You are, know, you, are you allowed to share a room in that I don't I think in the Western Brand Hotels they, oh, they mind. No. But, I mean, technically, no. Oh, but, really? Oh, we were very illegal. No. Yeah, we did some very illegal things. <laughs> in this day and age, we yeah. actually... Mm. That's really sad. It is sad. Anyway, um, Mike said, no, we have to have the fan off. And I said, why would we turn the fan off? He said, it could fall down from the ceiling and it could amputate me. Right, I'm, I'm really worried about him. Like Anne Boleyn. Yes. So yeah, very much, I'm really worried about him at the moment. I... I I said, darling, if I said I don't think it's going to fall down. He said there could be an earthquake. I said if there is an earthquake, we have bigger things to worry about than a fan that is halfway across the room somehow coming down at such a speed on speed two, which is you know, vroom, vroom. it's not like at did speed six. Did you have around. an aircon? We did. I just wanted the fan to help circulate the air. And then the noise is quite soothing, isn't it? It was very quiet. You'd hardly have heard oh. it. But the fact he thinks it's going to come down and somehow find its way over to the bed and slice off his legs. How does he work? How's his mind? Bizarre. Right? So I anyway, just don't I just... like him, Joe. I thought he's going to bloody chop my head off and he had work next week and got a big shift coming up. And I just, you know, being a bricklayer and all, you need, you need, you need to be intact. Um, but other than that, we had a very nice holiday and it was very nice to get back to the Asia-Pacific region because, as you know, I used to be very big in the Asia-Pacific region. very big out there. And I haven't been, haven't visited for a while, so it was nice to go back. How were your travels? Oh, it was great. I went to Florida. I was working. You were technically working. I yeah. managed to get on some of the rides. Did now, you? Years ago, I used to be scared of the rides. But now I'm just like, so I went on pretty, oh, there's a new one. If you go to Florida, it's absolutely fantastic. It's called the Hagrid Ride. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, it's been there for about two years, but yeah. All right. Sorry. Oh, well, I just thought, factual, uh, think, don't come at me with theme parks. And I went to, um, what's the Harry Potter bit called? Well, it's all, um, the Wizarding World. Yeah, the Wizarding World, and it's still magical. I went to It's very good. I went 12 years. It's fantastic. Yeah, they do, a, I've said this before, but you forget how big the portions are out there. Yes. I got some calamari and some chips and dip to start. It was like big oval plates. And then I ate it. And then I had a sushi burger. Oh, Christ. A it sushi burger? A sushi burger. It How was does fantastic. That work? It's just a, it's like a, it's weird. It was like a burger, but sushi. It's, I can't explain it. Also, every morning as well, I had, um, had a, had a massive bagel. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I had, um, it's a lot of carbohydrates. Yeah. This time. I had a bagel. Then someone told me to try what they call biscuits and gravy. Oh no. It's just dumplings in it. And gravy. It's sauce. like a dumpling come scone. Had breakfast one day next to Nicole Scherzinger. Did you? Mm, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Got chatting to a, a boyfriend, boyfriend, husband, partner. He, he was in gym. Tom. He Tom with gym. an H. He was in gym one day. So yeah, it was good. Um, Really good. I had a f fantastic time out there. Nice. How many nights were you away? You just want to get to the singing and dancing. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm building up to the singing and dancing. I was there for six nights. Right. Yeah. And you flew from Heathrow. Flew from Heathrow. The service out there is good. I mean, 18% tip, though. Every time you get a drink, 18%. Yeah. It sounds pretty wild, doesn't it? Can I just say here, uh, can I say one thing to you? In fact, I'm going to Heathrow after this for a, a quick trip to Scotland for something. And I'm very much hoping when I get to Terminal 5, there's someone in a lovely BA uniform that comes up to me and says, Winners check in this way! <laughs> Winners check in this way! You look lovely in that BA uniform. Thank you. Yes. That was about 7 o'clock in the morning. That. That Obviously, was... standards clearly have slipped at British Airways no, if, they'll let oh, you, oh, if they'll let you be a no, member of No, they were group. super on it. There was someone, a representative from BA, to check that I had everything in place and everything, so... And they wanted me to, had to hide these, my wrist, my, what are they, bracelets. Yeah, your rosary beads. They're not rosary beads. But yeah. Um, no, speak, you, did, you did look very nice. Speaking of which, yeah. on the way back, we had some really bad turbulence. And I don't want to scare anyone who's also scared of flying like me. It mm. was fine, but it was really bad. And mm. people that are regular flyers said that was pretty bad turbulence. To the point where... They had to ask the cabin crew to take the seats as well. Oh, mm. yeah, that's bad. I wasn't drinking. Um, but you were afterwards. Ali, the lovely cabin crew member, came up to me and she gave me a little hug because she could tell I was scared. She said, can I get anything? I went, I'll have a little scotch. So I had a couple of scotches. <laughs> so Nick and, Sturgeon came over. <laughs> and then, what? What? Don't worry. And then 
I don't get you sometimes. <laughs> and then the turbulence stopped. Mm. I was getting my head down. Some, have you ever been... Some horrible farts. What? Some horrible trumps. Like, first, I was very... I, <laughs> of I, Anchor I, and Jared. I... I, I <laughs> That wasn't funny. <laughs> right. Yes. I was, I was like, I was very you. So first of all, <laughs> oh, I'll let it slide. Because yes. it's, you know, the odd one slips out. We've all been there, Monaco and that. And then after two or three, really bad for about half hour, I just popped, stuck my head up and just went, tutted. I, tu- <laughs> I, tu- I tutted a fart. I went, Ugh. yeah. Wow. So, Bless you. Well, maybe it was probably just all that all that carbohydrates that you'd right, eaten. Right, come on, get to it. I know what you're going to get to. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Jordan North, uh, if radio or TV or podcasting fails him, Jordan is going to be... We're going to go and see Jordan's West End opening, and we're going to see you on stage doing a song and dance number. And uh, shall we have a look at some of the clips? Wait. Or we'll hear the clips? Can I just explain? Mm. So, in the final of Saturday Night Takeaway, it was... Filmed live in Florida. Yes, for those that didn't watch it. With all the um, people who got a place on the plane. And it was, um, I had to sing and dance at the start and at the end of the show. Now, purposely, the production team Mm. didn't tell me until two days out there what I was doing. And I thought they were being a bit coy because I was like, I've not really, I've been given a schedule, but I don't really know what I'm doing in the show. Um, I've not really been told. And the reason they didn't tell me is because they knew I'd be nervous and overthinking it. As soon as I found... I had to go to rehearsals one day, and it was dance rehearsals, and I genuinely didn't know until I got there. Because they all know what I'm like. I overthink and flap. Mm. Couldn't sleep the night before. And I had to do a, a dance at the start of the show to... Na, 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 na. And at the end, I had to... And I was so nervous about this. For anyone that's ever been to one of our live shows, particularly the, the last two, when we've ended with a with a song and dance number, you know, John and I, we're not dancing on stage, really. We're just sort of moving to... Well, I'm moving to a beat. I can't. Jordan I... is there. <laughs> no. You can't clap. It's all out of sync. I don't, I don't want to self-diagnose here, but my mum and brother have dyspraxia, and I'm right. pretty sure I... I'm pretty sure I've got I it. just think you're just tone deaf. No, I, that as well. That as well, but I'm pretty sure. In fact, a few people have messaged me saying, I think you've got dyspraxia, but okay. I, that's why I just can't dance. Yeah. Right. So, this is right. What Should we, we have a. Let, let's have a, a Are listen. They're coming up on here. They're going to come up on our oh, screen. Oh, God, I'm not. Oh, oh. no. Here we go. Oh, no. So this is, so I've not seen it yet. This is the first time I've seen it. They're great, they're singing live. Oh, they're so good, aren't they? Very good. Oh no. How great are they? Here we go. Was that bad? Was it bad? Well, that that bit, you you you're kind of you know you're gyrating in some form, and your shirt. I mean, we, to be honest, we couldn't see past the shirt. Let's just talk about your hot pink shirt. It's lovely. Okay. Did you have a nice time? Though? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I did. I went for. I proper went for it. You did. You did. And, right. I've not seen. And now we'll look at the ending. Oh, God. Jordan's big ending. Back to you, boys. <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> I do the impressions, all right. <laughs> I was so nervous. I actually missed my cue and went on stage too early. So do you want to describe what's going on? There's a big marching band. Yeah, Ant and Deck are leading a marching band. Oh, God. We're building up. 
Everyone was great, but for me, genuinely. Ants now got symbols. Who's that? It's Donald Trump. I thought this was great, like. Well, now some Dr. Oh, Seuss no. characters. What? Oh, no, oh, no, no, I can't watch. That was me singing. There'll be music everywhere. Wait, you missed my dancing. Oh. Hello. Wait. I don't think that was too bad, actually. No, it wasn't at I all. I mean, in between Fleur and Nicole Scherzinger. Scherzinger, yeah. No, I had to do this. Is, I can remember the dance now. It's it was one, two, three, four. 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 Five, six, seven, eight. And Pivot, pivot, one, two, three, four. Well, that's great. There I am, look. Very well. There you go. Available well, for bookings. Well done. Thank Another you. string to your bow. There'll be music. Sweet music. There'll be music everywhere. <laughs> if your drama teacher that cast you in Oklahoma with, gee, mama, I'm so hungry, I can eat a gate post. No, you got that oh, totally wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was, gee, Annie, I'm so hungry, I could eat a... Gate post. Gate post. So I got one word wrong. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. I want to go and see that. I couldn't mean to text Mikey. No, it was very good. Well done. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Um, and you flew back from Florida straight into us just tweaking a, a bit of the book. Yeah. Into some revisions. Oh, and you, you were, i to be honest, you were committed. So thank you. And you gave us great attention. Did I? Yes. I was at three hours sleep. And yeah, was exactly. To say that you were jet lagged, three hours sleep, you've got borderline ADHD anyway. You gave us very, very good attention. So thank you. Okay. Um, my favourite bit, you, me, and Stuart were, were there just sort of tweaking. <laughs> it's just we're sort of reading it, and it's gone silent. And you just we're not we're not. There's nothing in the in the manuscript, anything related to this. And you just go, "Who are Armitage Shanks?" <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> uh, it was. I just, I've got um when I'm knackered, like. And I'm, t I'm, you know, how my mind works anyway. Mm. And um, yeah, and like you said, a lot of people do message me saying they think I've got ADHD. So when I'm tired and jet lagged, I just I've been for a wee. And every time you go, we're always pissing on Armitage Shanks. You who are said. Armitage Shanks? If you ever go in a public toilet, or even if you've got like you move into an house, most of the toilets or bath or sinks are made by Armitage Shanks. They're just a bathroom company. Who are they? I've never. It's just for years. I've always. Had Armitage Shanks in my life, but that's how my mind works. We're meant to be editing up this book that we're writing. Yeah. Which is available... In November. In November, but you can pre-order now online. And also on audiobook. An audiobook. And I'm meant to be, like, editing it, and that just came into my mind. <laughs> Maybe we could dedicate Let the book Google. to Let Armitage Google. Shanks. I'm going to Google Armitage... Oh. Why don't you... After this, we've recorded this, we could go into the loo and I could give you an Armitage Shank. Armitage Shank. 
Oh, Armitage Shanks. Yeah, they're a toilet company. Victoria Plumbing. No, that's a different one. Armitage Boss, Shanks your nose. is a British manufacturer of bathroom fixtures and plumbing, now part of the group Ideal Style in 2004. Armitage Shanks had eight factories in London, yeah. Well, there we go, Armitage Shanks. You've got some free advertising. There you go. If you want to send us a free... Yeah, look! I don't need a free loo. Look, that's an Armitage Shank urinal. Yeah, we, well, yes. Yeah. It's like a little handwriting font. Also, toilets in America. Mm. You ever had a... You have to use golf number two. They're, they're, they're pre, there's no privacy, is there? Really? They're, like, well high up the stalls. High up the stalls? Right, you can see. They're, like... Oh, I see the doors. The, like, no, the stalls and the doors. Yeah. Like, usually, the, there might be a little gap in Britain. It, they're, like, up to here in America. Mm. Yeah, well, a bunch of perverts. Anyway... Um, well, I hope the jet lag's wearing, wearing off now. Thank you. Is it an hour for every... No, a day. It takes you a day to get over every hour time That's difference. I'm, I am still... I fell asleep at half seven last I fell asleep before Emmerdale finished last night. Wow. Yeah. Does I, Emmerdale start at seven or 7.30? Seven. I was asleep for about 20 past seven. Yeah. I, I just come home and had some soup. Went to bed. I've, um, I'm going through... You're going through your direct messages on Instagram. Yeah. Because someone sent me a um, a joke. Anyway, go on. Oh, I see. Um, well, well done. Uh, Marvellous, and I hope the jet lag wears off. Should we go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week? Yep. It's from Emma Jantz on Insta. She said, my wife asked me today if I've seen the dog bowl. I said, no, I didn't know he could. <laughs> it's nice. It's clean. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well done, Emma Jantz. Um, now, did you know that in between being Diego's daddy and occasionally popping up on our podcast, that a executive producer, Ben, writes a monthly newsletter? We mentioned it in the weekend release. Mm. It's full of extra sexted content, news and announcements. So if you want to keep up with the latest from us, where do people go, Jordan? Where am I? <laughs> uh, you should get signed up to our newsletter at Sex of My Boss. It's the jet lag. Sex of My Boss dot com. I'll go to the link in our bio on socials. Marvelous! It is very good. It is very. It's good. beautifully designed. Yeah. The content's all right as well. This one is from Celine. <gasps> Celine. Wait. Shall what? we go to the listeners' questions? Yes. Let's get on to the listeners' questions. This one. Guess who this is from? It's from Celine. Dion. Potentially, I haven't read it. Or it could be Mr. G's dog in Summer Heights High. Those of you that watched that, she was called Celine. Oh, she was. Oh, that's a great series. Yeah. What's well, my best Celine song? Isn't um, my heart will go on? No, it's that one where it's Think Twice. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's... it's a big drum solo in it. I like. Don't say <laughs> what you're about to say. And then it she goes, No, 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 no. It's like she's here. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, also, thank you to everyone, by the way, who's going to New York and uh, going to see Titanic. And they all message me to say they're booking tickets to Titanic. I hope you have a nice time. We should get some commission on that. <laughs> that being funny. I believe the run has extended, so you don't. You have a bit longer until the end of May, which is what it was originally. Anyway, sorry, sorry, Celine. Sorry. Anyway, uh, dear William Jordan and all the lovely people working behind the scenes. Working. Uh, I'm writing to you with a dilemma that's just getting awkward at this point. I need to know what is the etiquette for introductions within group friends. My boyfriend's friend, friend, my boyfriend's friend group consists of six guys, two of whom are in a relationship. A third friend has the occasional hookup with a particular girl for a couple of months now. He says that they're not in a relationship and that it isn't anything serious, especially since he sleeps with other girls as well. Slept. No sleeps. It's active. Oh, I, I don't know. It sleep. could be passive. I don't know. My boyfriend was planning a birthday meal and he invited our entire group of friends. They were allowed to bring their plus ones, meaning their partners. Thank you. Yeah, we... <laughs> she clarified Thanks, that. Celine. Our friend asked if he was allowed to bring this girl from whom he says not to be in a relationship with. She showed up and it was the third time I've met her. Every time we've met, she has never greeted me or talked to me, but this time she was at my boyfriend's birthday party and not some random encounter on a night out. She did, however, talk to our other friends, just not to me. 
Uh, I don't know what her deal is, but I want to make sure I do the correct thing. My question is, if someone new joins the friend group, is it the newcomer who should introduce themselves, or should the group introduce themselves to the newcomer? As I said, it's getting awkward at this point, since she has been sleeping with our friends since October last year, and we have seen each other before, but still haven't spoken a word to each other. I think she should introduce herself to us as she is new, but I'm not the expert, just a potentially stubborn woman. Lots of love from the Netherlands. Ah, that explains it. Celine. Celine, um... I mean, I mean this with the utmost respect, but it, it, it all sounds a bit petty, Celine. Mm. Just be the bigger person and go up and say hello. Break the ice. Don't. Be, I know quite a few people like, oh, she didn't come and say hello to me, or you didn't come and say hello to me at the party. Go over and say hi. Yeah, I would say from an etiquette point of view, it is up to the, uh, the people that are already there or the existing friendship circle to welcome in a newcomer, and you do that when you see them for the first time. Oh, hello, I'm Celine, yeah, well, I'm Jordan, I'm William, ways. this is this yeah. is Ben, this is Kat, etc. You have to be the one to initiate the greeting. We've all been that person at a party with nobody to talk to and everyone's getting on really well or if we don't know people, you should be the one to extend the hand of friendship. However, in this instance, because it is a bit late, to be honest, you know, you've, you've sort of done first impressions, you've met her three or four times. Next time you see her, you just... Go over. Go over. Hello. I don't think we've been introduced. My name Say is Celine. Say hello. Celine. Break the ice. You could, could be a best friend in waiting. Yep. Think twice, Celine. <laughs> <laughs> Your heart will go on. Think of another pun quick, Sophie. <laughs> I'm alive. I don't know. That's just a Celine. Come on, song. give us a Celine pun, Ben. Oh, don't turn no. to him. He lives in Hackney. <laughs> They don't play Celine Dion in Hackney. They don't, where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> no, but your mother would have done. Oh, if she fell out with Graham, it was always Celine. Oh, was it? Oh, no, yeah. Same, same, same dad had gone out on piss for two nights. Are you remembering it? Yeah. yeah it's and all coming she, back she, to you she, now. She, she, and if she was cleaning up, it was always Whitney. She'd have a Whitney on. If she was going out, it was always like, um, what's her name? Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You didn't see that. If <laughs> if my dad had pissed her off, she'd be like. Mm. Don't play longer than ten seconds. We'll have to pay her. All men are bastards, <laughs> Jordan. Don't you grow up like your father? I tell you, who goes out on a Friday and comes back Sunday? There you go. I had a very happy childhood, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Just very northern. <laughs> This is from Stephen with a PH. Dear William Jordan, Diego and producer Ben, I have an issue that I'm hoping you can help with. I've been with my partner for a few years now and last Christmas we went away to his family in Spain. This was the first time we as a couple had been with just his family. All was going well until the evening before we returned home when in the middle of the night I needed to go to the bathroom. I went down the corridor in the dark, opened the door, pulled down my shorts and sat on the toilet. After I finished I flushed, washed my hands and left. Okay, so far so good. On my way back to our bedroom, my partner's mother was walking towards the bathroom and gave me what I can only describe as a really dirty look. I wasn't sure why, so I just smiled and went back to bed. As we woke up and got out of bed the next morning, my partner asked me if I've gotten too warm in the night, which I thought was odd, and I looked down to see I was naked. I suddenly realised that when I had gone to the bathroom, I'd left my shorts in there and forgot to put them back on. Therefore, it appears I accidentally flashed my future mother-in-law, which my partner found and still finds hilarious. Especially after she apparently said to him, Oh my God, your Stephen's got a big willy, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, <just> spat him. <laughs> anyway, now we're supposed to be meeting up for a family... Your Stephen's got a big willy. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine your mum saying that. Yeah. No wonder you walk like John Wayne. <laughs> your Stephen's got a big willy. Especially now we're. <laughs> that tickled me. <laughs> tickled him. Especially now we're supposed to be meeting up for family members. <laughs> anyway. Your Stephen's got a big willy. That's got to be the title of this episode. Anyway, help, now. Help my mum sing my partner's willy. Anyway, now we're supposed to be meeting up for a family member's birthday, and this will be the first time we've seen each other since Spain, and I'm not really sure what to say when I see her. What's the etiquette for flashing future in-laws? Should I apologise or send an apology card of some sort? Kind regards, Stephen. Just never. I don't... Part of me's here, like, make a joke of it. She sounds like she's fun. Yeah. Make a joke of it. Well, why did she give her the dirty look? I mean, I don't think Stephen was there... 
Because he's walking around with his... Yeah, but he, he didn't do it deliberately. flopping about. His love length. <laughs> never heard it called that before. Watch Phoenix Nights. I've never oh, okay. seen where they get the bouncy castle. He's like, oh, I have kids running up and down on a love length. Apparently he forgot his line and that's what came to his head. Okay. Anyway. There we go. Um, no, Stephen, you didn't do it on purpose, so I don't think you need to send an apology card. Um, if, if you have to say something, and I don't actually think you need to, you could just take her to one side and say, oh, sorry about the other night. I was, you know, didn't realise I didn't have shorts on. I was half asleep. Let's role play. Okay. okay. Who's who? Darling. <laughs> <laughs> Your mic has got a rather large <laughs> willy. And that's the end of that. <laughs> that was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the fact she said you're Stephen, not Stephen, you're Stephen's guy. Right. Uh, this is from Daisy. Hello, William Jordan and producer Ben. I was recently on a plane and watching the film Bros on the in-flight entertainment system. Oh, I wanted to watch this. I've heard there's loads of dragon in it, isn't there? Um, Have you seen it? Is there, I wouldn't say there's... Is there not? There's, yeah. There's a bit. Oh, is there? Anyway. Is it any good? <sighs> Yeah, I'm getting... Some people mm. say it's... It's like, all right. Some people say it's amazing. Others are like... Mm. I wouldn't call it amazing. Oh, sorry to interrupt. I watched The Whale and The Play. Okay. And um, Tar. Sorry, both. If you're listening, Gene Deepers. Well, obviously you are because you're listening. <laughs> Watching. <laughs> Tar, she's a conductor. It's really good. Oh, Kate Blanchett. It's really good. <laughs> but also, slipped. The Whale, right? Mm. Is it just me? Like, it's, it's harrowing to watch. Absolutely harrowing. I haven't seen it. But, and it's about this really obese man who's let himself go. He's got really deep psychological problems. And I watch it. We've all it. been there. I watch it. I just want to eat. Right. There's a, there's a scene where he, I, don't, I won't give too much away. He, he, he gets a massive meatball subway. Right. Mm. And I watched that on the plane. And he, because he gorges it so much, he choked himself. It's harrowing to watch. And all week I just wanted a meatball sub. I had to get one on Tuesday in Florida. Honestly, I was just craving a meatball sub all week. Again, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good film, though. Good. I watched Paddington on the plane. Did you? Lovely film. I watched Boyhood as well. Cinema what? Five. You'd love Boyhood. I love Boyhood. I okay. knew that'd be up there. I'd say it's my top five, you know. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, emotional. How many times? I've seen, it, I've seen it about five, six times, I think. Anyway, Should we get back to Daisy's letter? It's filmed over 12 years. Anyway, uh, Daisy watched Bros on the in-flight entertainment system. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a very funny rom-com with a lot of sex scenes and nudity. Oh, there we go. As I was enjoying it, my boyfriend sitting next to me tapped me on the shoulder and told me that there were children sitting in the seats behind me and they could probably see the screen. Mm. I didn't want to stop watching the film as I was enjoying it, but I felt self-conscious watching something that might not be appropriate in a public setting and definitely not suitable for children that young. I continued by putting my hands and face up to the screen in any naughty bits so no one around me could see. But my question is what is the etiquette for watching films with adult content on a plane surrounded by others? Thanks in advance, Daisy. Yeah, I think Daisy. I mean, if if there's a lot of sh if there's kids around you and there's big and there's a lot of sex scenes, then maybe think twice. I don't know. I don't know. Half of me is inclined to say, well, you know, there we go. But if there's ki if the, I, I personally, if there was any film that had loads of dragon in. Mm. I'd probably, if there were kids around, probably would watch it, personally. No. But if you're halfway through it and only notice, then just crack on. Yeah, and maybe the kids, I mean, are the kids asleep? I mean, if they're asleep, then whatever. Kids whatever. asleep on a flight, on a flight, on a flight, <laughs> chance will be a fine thing. Oh, I used to get dosed up to my eyeballs in Medised. Did you? Which turns out, on a side That's note... That's not okay. So Medised, which actually got banned in 2017, I realised, when I did some Googling, is it's medical sedative. It was, it's like nighttime cowpole. Cowpole is still available, but it yeah. just has a little thing to put you to, just help you go to sleep. That is such a middle class thing. I was, I spent most it's of my me. life on Medised of my it childhood. It explains a lot. Because I suggested to some friends, I went, put the, get them on the Medised, not realising it was now banned. And anyway, they were, my friends wished the Medised was... <laughs> <laughs> Still a thing, but yes, yeah. But didn't do no me wanna, any harm. No one would do that. No, no one would. Do, I sound really old, and no one would do that nowadays with kids. No, people like my friends and brothers and everything. They, yeah, the kids. We used to. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, but no. I look, used to have little bits of Bailey's when I was ten. Did you? How old were you when you first had a drink? Twenty-three. 
I gotta say, I think at Christmas my dad gave me a bit of Bailey's, me and Ryan, because we like the taste. And you were loads of water and ice in it. Right. So that makes it okay. Mm. How old were you? 10, 11. Right. <laughs> Did you ever used to be barman for your dad? No. I used to love that. I used to rub the little towel over my thing and go on just to get cans out at Pridge. Bless you. Yeah. And dramatic back then. Um, but no, anonymous, I, uh, sorry. But no, Daisy, I would uh, I would say it's, it's. I actually pff, just carry on. If you want to stop, stop. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, you're not going to enjoy the film. Sort of make a note of the time code and maybe watch it on the way back. Mm. Um, final one, this is from Anonymous. Hello, William Jordan and Ben. I have a personal trainer who I have had on and off for the past four years, and currently I'm seeing him twice a week. Unfortunately, I've realised that he isn't the best personal trainer for several reasons. Sounds like Pump It Up Pete. Uh, so I have done my research and found someone who I feel is going to get me the results I'm looking for and have signed up to start with them. Now this brings me to my dilemma, as I've been seeing my PT for the last four years, Jeez. and we have become friends to the point where I am invited to his wedding this summer. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, God. I also am still going to be attending the gym where he works, and I will be seeing him often. He also knows I have a big birthday coming up, so he knows I want to be in the best shape I can be. So in turn, I will need a PT. How do I break up with him without it being awkward? Thanks very much in advance, Anonymous. Oh, this is tough. I'm, yeah, this is tough. I mean, if your new PT is at a different gym, I would say that makes it slightly better because you could just say, I'm just going to have a break from PT sessions at the moment. I'm going to try something, you know, I think, you know, you've got me to a point where I know what I'm doing. Thanks so much. Well, let's resume. If you are going to be at the your gym that your old PT is at with the new PT, yeah, that's awkward, particularly because you're going to weddings. After the wedding, just send a long text. And I know you might think a text is the coward's way out. Just say, hey, get all you. I'd send a text, say, look, this happened. I just think it's four years. It's time to refresh, trying to renew. Some presidents don't even last that long. <laughs> Prime ministers. Four years is a long time for a PT. And then just say, give me a call or if you want to meet for a coffee or something. But I'd start as a text after the wedding. Then say, give us a ring. We'll go for a coffee and just explain there. It's hard. I, I think that is a really hard one, Anonymous. I don't really know what to say. It's like a breakup. But I think if you have found this new PT, I just hope that there is a different gym. Mm. Or you could ultimately, I mean, I, you know, every times are tough for everyone. You could you could pay for two and maybe just scale down your commitment for the old PT, see them once a month. That is rubbish. No, that is, okay, sorry, that's rubbish. <laughs> Even the producer disagrees. I don't really know. I mean, I when I broke up with Pump It Up Pete, it was because he was a twit. So it was well, quite he was a bigot. Easy. And he was a bigot, he was a twit. Well, he wasn't a bigot, he was a flat earther. And had some questionable views on climate yeah. change. and questionable views in general. Yeah. And also, that made me cry. Not because of his views on global warming. Although they were pretty upsetting. Was he actually a flat earther? No offence to any flat earthers listening. Well... Well, it's not flat, though. No. It's not, anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, let us know what you do. Um, that's that's a tricky one. <sighs> well, what's coming up on the weekend release, Jordan? Uh, we've been sent a few Aussie sayings. G'day, mate. Cockatoo, yeah. Mm. Slapping on the bobby. Okay. Mm. Nice. Lovely. Uh, and also, we hear about an alternative to cock or ball. Oh, good. Did we talk about that a few weeks ago? <laughs> Uh, did I ask you to be able to play cock or ball? You did, yes. Have, I... you, have, have you played it with Mikey since? No, I have not played it with Mikey since. William, is that cock or ball? Ooh, that's a cock. <laughs> Always remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Sundays and share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com. You can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at Sex and My Boss or you can write to William who promises a handwritten reply and his own letter to pay but the address is on the website sextodmyboss.com we will see you on Friday for the bonus episode goodbye goodbye